Welcome to another Geometry Nodes tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be looking at camera culling, this mystical art of optimizing scenes. It's quite easy for us to actually do. So if you've seen my previous video where I'm showing off the product that I made, that uses maths to do the camera culling, uh, which is great because it's very performant and it doesn't rely on geometry. However, setting it up requires a certain amount of maths. So I will do a tutorial on how to set that up at some point in the future when we have some more nodes that make it a little bit more accessible. However, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do camera culling using dynamic paint. And this may open up a few ideas for some of you as well outside of camera culling. Super easy to set up, doesn't require any maths. And I'm using 2.92 for this. So you can do this with 2.92 just fine. So first of all, what we need is we need a canvas and a brush. And because we're doing camera culling, we're also going to need a camera. This, for anybody who is wondering, is frustrum culling, not occlusion culling. So we're basing our culling on like an infinite cone coming out of the camera, as opposed to hiding things which are actually occluded from sight behind hills and things. So I've got my ground plane here. And let me add a camera. GZ. I'm going to go Alt R as well. Uh, if you need my shortcuts, they're in the bottom left hand. So that was Alt R just to clear rotation, have it point straight down. Uh, my default resolution is 2000 by 2000 because social media. But obviously, if you have 1920 by 1080, that's probably your defaults. Now we want to create our frustrum. So let's Shift S. I want to do cursor to selected. So it's going to move our 3D cursor to the root of our camera. Then let's add a plane and then we're going to press tab F3. This is going to bring up our search and then just type in poke. Poke faces just draws an X basically between opposing corners. And this is very useful because now we have a center point. We can just select our edges here, drag them down. We don't need to make this massive to begin with. We'll do that in a sec. I just need this to be basically in line with the bounds of the camera's view. So just line that up like that. I'm going to give it a bottom face as well. And then I don't want this to be solid. So let's jump into our object properties. Down at the bottom, we have viewport display, change it from textured to wire. And for rendering purposes, we're going to want to turn this off in rendered view. At the moment, everything's just called plane. Let's call this one frustum, just like that. And then we have our camera, we have our ground plane. Our frustum is a bit small. At the moment, it's it, it needs to be bigger. So to do this, what we do is we press G twice, and this gives us edge slide, but you'll see that we can't actually go beyond it like shrinks down in the middle. So what we do is we come up a little bit. This sets the edge that we want to slide on and then we press C, C for continue. And then what we can do is we can actually extend that beyond the bounds of those lines. So there we go. I'm going to go a little bit further, G twice, bring it up, press C to extend and then bring it the rest of the way. I basically just want this to be larger than the plane on which we will be instancing because I don't want it to have any point where I'm looking in a certain direction and the brush runs out or the frustrum runs out and there's a blank space beyond. So the next thing we just need to do here at the moment, if I move the camera, frustrum stays where it is. So what I need to do is parent. Let's select our frustrum. Let's select our camera and control P object. So now what happens if I have two of these open, we're going to camera view and I look around with that with, uh, I use shift tilde or you can use view navigation uh, walk or fly, I use walk. Cool, that's looking great. That's exactly what we need for our frustrum object to be connected to the camera. This bottom window, I'm just going to change over to geometry nodes. Let's set up the camera so that we can actually debug this a little bit. And let's do a few things. We need to set up dynamic paint first. So grab your ground plane, go into your modifier stack. And to begin with, we need some more subdivisions. Dynamic paint is reliant on geometry. In this case, we're going to be using vertex weights. So you need as many vertices as you want resolution. So this is the bad point of using this method is because it relies on geometry. However, if you have like a highly subdivided plane that you're using as your ground and it's got displacement, then in all likelihood, you already have the geometry you need. So we're just going to add a modifier, subdivide surface, set this to simple, give it a few levels. Um, I might leave it quite low to begin with, just so that you can see the limitation there. And then we'll turn it up in a sec. And then after this, we're going to add another modifier. Use the dynamic paint. It's also on the physics tab, but I just like to add the modifier. Then you can click the button to go to the physics tab. Law is the canvas. This is what we paint on. So type canvas, add canvas. 
and we need to do a few settings in here. Surface is fine. Surface type, instead of paint, displace or waves, we're going to be using weight. We're painting vertex weights so that we can use these then in geometry notes. And we need to set a brush collection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my frustrum up into a new collection here, which I'm just going to call brushes. And then I can set my brushes on here. And this is now looking at the correct collection for the brush. We'll come back to the settings in a moment, but we need to just come down to output here. This is saying, where does it want to paint onto? Where is this vertex group it's painting onto? At the moment it's red. We just need to click this plus and it will generate this DP weight. So now on our object data properties, our vertex weights, we have generated this DP weight. Obviously, if you want to set a, like a custom group, then you would just create that group and then point it in the right direction. We also just need to set up our brush as a brush. So let's jump in here as well. Uh, physics, dynamic paint, set this as a brush, add brush. I'm just gonna set the brush color to one, leave everything as it is. I'm gonna use mesh volume, that's fine. Yeah, all of this is fine. On my right hand pane here, I'm gonna press control tab and then go into white paint. So now you can see what we're actually white painting here. And you can see as I move around, this is jumping all over. This is what happens when you do not have enough geometry. Back to my modifiers, increase the number of subdivisions and you can see that increases the resolution. So now you can see with a higher subdivision count, we are painting this region with a higher weight. Red means a weight of one, blue means a weight of zero. So we're essentially masking out this region. So now what I wanna do is actually add the geometry nodes. So control tab, let's go back to object view here. And on my ground plane with that selected geometry nodes, let's add a new tree. And let's add a point distribute and a point instance node in here. And uh, I'm gonna throw in an asset. I've got botanics, so I'm just gonna add some bushes. If you have a parent object like this that you want to be instancing, so I can just select my, my tomatoes, there we go. And I've just applied the scale. When we have this kind of instance object like this, if you do not wanna see the parent, then you can just put it in a collection on its own and hide that collection. So at the moment, we just have these tomato plants all over the place. Let's bring the ground back. Geometry, join geometry. And let's plug this through like this. There we go. Now we've got our ground plane again. And now what we want to do is we want to set our density attribute based on our frustrum. So the vertex weight was called DP weight. Let's just type in DP underscore weight. And there we have it. You can see now that we are culling specifically to this region. And something that's worth noticing actually is that uh, if I just hide this DP weight, I don't know if that's clear, but this is running much slower. If I move the viewport around, we can see the FPS at the top of the viewport there says 9.4, 9.3 frames per second. And when we go back to our camera curling, DP underscore weight, oh, we're actually slowing it down again. So this is an issue. Something which I forgot to mention before is that as we move around, we increase the area that's painted. So that's actually not helping anybody. What we need is to have the paint disappear. How do we do this? Very simple. There's just a setting in the canvas. So let's hop over there onto the physics tab. On here, we have under the surface, we have dissolve. Let's tick this. And the time, this basically means how fast is the paint going to disappear? Let's set this to something like 10 frames, or you could even go lower, like five frames. Essentially, how quick does the paint dissolve? So now when we play and I look around, you can see that the paint just stays where the camera is. And if we look at our viewport FPS, we're rendering 20 to 30 frames a second, staying, if I move around quite a lot, it's staying around about 18, 19 frames. And when I stay in place, 23. So that's way up. That's like more than double what we were having up before without the camera culling. So if you are on perhaps a slower machine, this is going to be potentially a lifesaver. It's going to let you do much more complex scenes. So if you're viewing in Eevee and you're noticing you're getting these kind of nasty ghost lines that sort of fade around as you add new things, this is the viewport denoising. If you turn this off, that's all fixed. Things look a little bit more grainy, but it fixes the ghosting issue. And now we need to have a look at a couple of the other issues with this camera culling method and see how we can fix them. So the obvious one is popping. Around the edges, this is something that we can fix quite easily. Let's just jump into our frustrum here. Let's add a displace modifier. I'm gonna bring this up to the top, set my mid-level to zero. And now you can see that the strength of our displace grows and shrinks. 
It's important the displace is above dynamic paint because we need to change the size of the brush before it gets used as a brush. That's fine, we don't need a texture in here, we're just using the, uh, the basic displacement. If you want to have this as a controller defined within your geometry nodes tree, if you're doing things within geometry nodes, then it can be really useful to have access to things in other places of Blender, just kind of with you, right? Available where you're working. Let's just set this up really quickly. Input value node, control J to put it in a frame. I'm gonna call this one brush size. And if I just right click on the value here, copy as new driver, I feel like people always get scared of drivers, but it's literally that simple. Just copy as new driver. And then in my strength, I'm gonna paste driver. Now you can see that I can set my, uh, my driver size directly within my geometry nodes tree. That's super useful. Now we can get our additional space, which basically means that as we're up in the air, we don't necessarily get any popping around the outside. So you can set this size as big or as small as you need to do that. But we have some more issues. When we are down low like this, if I just move forwards, you can see that the tomato plants in the foreground pop, right? They disappear because this area where they are instancing, which is below my field of view, this is too far. This is going beyond the culling distance. So what's an option for us here? Well, I would actually recommend that you add an icosphere at your camera. And this is going to basically set a proximity to the camera where everything is rendered within a certain distance. So this is again quite easy for us to do. Let's just grab our frustrum, press tab, grab this base vertex here, shift S, cursor to selected. This brings the cursor in. And then while we're still in edit mode, this is important, shift A, icosphere. And I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. Right, so this is basically defining a space, a safe zone around the camera. And this will also get affected by that displace modifier. So you can see that if I come back onto here, we essentially have a region around the camera now. This is great though, because it means that we no longer have any popping in the foreground. We can't see anything coming in and out of view. As far as the camera itself is concerned, this space, this world is fully populated. You're not even having to use so much of your system resources to, to render it, to create this space. So this is a super useful technique and super simple to set up. Just dynamic paint, you set your ground as the canvas, you use dissolve to make sure that you're not just painting and leaving the paint there, and you're writing this to a vertex group, and then you just set your brush to a brush. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, I hope this was useful, and I'll catch you in the next one.